Welcome to another episode of Best of America by Horseback. I'm Tom C. with Christian Bisco. Many of our locations are chosen by our guest, and one of the most requested locations during the winter months when it's cold is Florida, the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean, and the islands, and so that's exactly what we took previous guest and new guest to great new locations. This particular episode, we are cruising to the Western Caribbean, where we'll ride in the beautiful Caribbean waters of Honduras and the jungles of Belize at Banana Bank Lodge. We'll have the Valley of Peace Christian School children come out, such wonderful children that is supported by Best of America by Horseback. We'll have our guests riding in new ways you may not have seen before. We'll see the horses of John Carr at Banana Bank as they all come out and they're with our guest amazing things that we're going to be seeing. We think you'll enjoy it a lot. Why don't you sit back, relax, and enjoy another episode of Best of America by Horseback. Part of this show is brought to you by Mill Creek Manufacturing, makers of the first compact and stainless steel manure spreaders. They also make spin groomer arena rakes and now a new line of outdoor power equipment like the Mighty Ox log splitters and wood chippers all top quality, high value equipment, all made in the USA. And by Spurs Big Fix, wound, skin, and hoof treatment. The more you use it, the more you'll love it. We know about your big old truck and that trailer that you tow. We even heard about your toys. So, what's holding it all together? Good thing you know who to trust for trailer hitches. b and Trailer Hitches. Trusted. On this episode of Best of America by Horseback, we are riding horses with viewers in Honduras on the small island of Roatan. They will ride in the crystal clear waters of Pristine Bay at the beach club Roatan on one of the most pristine beaches in the Western Caribbean. We will also return to Belize with viewers for a new jungle ride and adventure at the Banana Bank Lodge in central Belize. And we had the opportunity to catch up with the children of the Valley of Peace Christian School. A new stop on this trip to the Western Caribbean included the small island of Roatan, off the coast of Honduras in Central America. Our group went riding at the Beach Club Roatan, where they offered horseback riding with views of the ocean and coral reef, and riding in the water around a small private island. So when you when you um, entered the area, it was there was this beautiful white pristine beach and um, this long dock that went out into the ocean. On one side of the dock was this beautiful island with these um, palm trees and these Australian pines. Um, and then there was an area where all the horses were lined up. So they were really good. They asked you, you know, how long, you know, have you been riding? And of course, everybody that they've been riding with had been riding for years, and they kind of matched you up to your horse. The horses were. We're good. They were small horses. Um, they raise them there. The horses used for trail riders at Beach Club Roatan were mostly Pasofinos, small Spanish horses with a smooth gait suitable for any level rider. The horses were very well trained. We had a lot of fun. We got to do cantering uphill, cantering downhill, and then you go into the ocean. Each group, little group had a guide, whether it was two, three, four people, and we were five. Our guide actually walked. He was one of the natives, and he was very, very fit, and we were kind of like going, aren't you going to ride with us? And he said, no, I walk so I can help anybody that's got problems with their horses, so. It was different, but he was certainly kept up with us, except when he said, okay, there's a hill. Once he realized we all could ride, he said, there's a, and it was a pretty good sized hill. He says, if you want to gallop up to the top, go ahead. So 
yep, yeehaw, we went up and galloped up to the top of the hill. So the stereotype a lot of people have of horses in Central America or a lot of tourist trap areas um, doesn't apply here, does it? No, not at all. These were nice horses. I uh, was riding a Pasifino and I had never been on a, that type of horse and we kind of, I don't know if we cantered or ran up this hill, but boy was it ever fun. <laughs> <laughs> The second largest barrier reef in the world is off the shore here. You can see the waves breaking over the reef from the hill behind the resort. And then we came down to the ocean and uh, we walked our horses out into the ocean, around the island, up on the island, and then um, back through the ocean and back on the um, beach again. It, it was just beautiful. So your favorite part of the whole ride would have been what? Riding in the ocean. Riding in the ocean. How yeah. deep did you get? Uh, we got to just about up to almost to the top of the saddle horn. Oh, wow, that was pretty deep then. My horse did get to swim a little bit, just maybe four or five strides. Uh, uh, the horses would do what you asked them. We, How deep was the water when you rode through it? It was probably four, four foot, maybe. You, so know, you, you were wet. Maybe. You got wet. Oh, okay. You just, the horses were not swimming uh, most of the time, but their head, their necks were out. Like I say, I turned mine just a little bit to the right as we were going around the island, and, and she definitely took a few few strides with, with the swimming. Very so that was cool. kind of fun, but yeah. uh, it, was, it was a great ride. The horses were very nice. The guides were just wonderful. After the ride, visitors could spend the day at the resort, enjoying the pristine white sand beach and crystal clear water, where you can see the bottom with no problem. The resort has a restaurant, lounge chairs on the beach, and offers a variety of other recreational opportunities, like swimming and snorkeling, boat tours, flyboards, segways, and jet skis. So many things you could do there. Beautiful beach. The Dude Ranchers Association is celebrating 90 years promoting all-inclusive quality Western adventure vacations. With over 100 ranches west of the Mississippi offering activities like horseback riding, skeet shooting, whitewater rafting, fly fishing, and great children's programs, you are sure to find the perfect location for family reunions, girlfriend getaways, or that vacation of a lifetime. Dude Ranch Association ranches adhere to the highest industry standards. We are all about quality. The last stop of our 2016 winter cruise to the Western Caribbean was our favorite jungle riding location, Banana Bank Lodge. Because of the large barrier reef, cruise ships have to dock off the coast and passengers are transported to shore in tenders. Once on shore, we are met by lodge owner John Carr, who rides with our group by bus to introduce them to his adopted country of Belize and to tell his personal story. After an hour bus ride, the road goes from hardtop to a single track dirt path through the jungle. At the end of this awaits a small boat to ferry our passengers across the river to Banana Bank Lodge. When we went into Banana Bank Lodge, tell us perhaps what you were thinking as you were thinking about traveling into a third world country like this. I had seen the t one of the TV shows uh, so I had some indication uh, what it was like, I guess, uh, and overall, uh, but the reality of it is even more intense. The colors, the smells, uh, the, the vegetation being so incredibly thick. I kept thinking of people coming across for the first time and seeing these jungles must have been impenetrable. Montana cowboy John Carr moved his family to Belize in the 70s. Together, they carved out a home from the thick jungle where they raise cattle and horses, grow crops year round, and built a jungle lodge for guests. John's passion is horses. His stock of over 100 horses are mostly quarter horse thoroughbred crosses that he has bred and raised here on the ranch. The horseback ride through the jungle was amazing. Yeah, they, he's got some beautiful horses. He does. They're beautiful. And the breeding program he's done has just been amazing. I went with my youngest son, who doesn't ride very often, and he just jumped right in there and, and did it. And he was talking to his horse the entire time. And <laughs> he was having a good time. 
And I think it was nice to go through the jungle and, and, and see those things and, and then to take them down by the river and enjoy that and let the horses drink. Yeah. It was fun. The horses were fantastic, so well trained, so well behaved. Um, they knew how to handle the mud, even if the rider was skeptical of the horse kind of, yeah, I got it, I got it. Just sit back and relax, I'll take you through it. And we got to do some trotting or cantering, and then I think the final part of the whole thing was coming back, there was a holler monkey up in the tree, and we got to notice it, and everyone is quickly stopping to try and see where this holler monkey is. And He's kind of looking at us like, yes, what can we do for you? So it was, He was not on performance mode, was he? No, he was not. Both of you are in backcountry horsemen, what, past president? Yes. And you are? I'm the secretary. So uh, you've unit. been around the block riding horses for quite a bit. How did the horses of Banana Bank compare? Were you surprised? Um, I was surprised because we've also done some, some trail rides in visiting other countries. And these horses were, they were very nice horses. They were healthy. They were very responsive to what we wanted them to do. And it was a good ride, it was a very good ride. You have had some horses here that have sired wonderful horses. Tell me about that. A friend of mine had a son of Aladar. Aladar got second in the Kentucky Derby in the Preakness and Belmont to affirmed in 1978. So he, he missed being a triple crown winner by one horse. And in and, and two of those races, it was like six inches. It was by a nose. One was about a length. So I have, and Aladar had three sons. He had Ali Sheba and another horse, both won der derby winners. And so I have products of that. And so those horses have got, you don't get that good without having brains and abilities to learn and do the right thing when you're in that class of horses. So we've produced that. And, but we've learned one thing. If you just get that pure thoroughbred, it, they're, 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 they, they're not strong enough. We have to have some local, we call it Creole blood in them. And so you put that local butt in there, the stamina changes, the mente changes for that portion, and you get some really nice crosses. To demonstrate how well his horses are trained, John often surprises his equestrian guests by bringing a horse into the dining hall where everyone is gathered. He then encourages them to get on and even stand up on the horse. This is always something they recall when talking about their visit to Banana Bank Lodge. Since I hurt my leg, I haven't ridden a whole lot, but I had, when I saw John Carr bring that one horse into the restaurant, I said, oh boy, that's the one I'm gonna try to get and ride, and I did, and he was a great horse. We went, got to Banana Bank, and what did y'all do when we got there? Samantha got to stand on the horse, and then we did the double one. That was pretty cool. Is this your first trail ride? First Both major of you trail girls? ride. Oh, wow. Very cool. That'll something be something to always remember. He showed her how to jump a log. Yeah, and then that's all <laughs> she wanted to do <laughs> was jump logs and run faster and faster. So I think it exceeded my expectations. I really wasn't expecting the facilities that they have. The facilities there are very nice, and the story behind it is even more impressive. So, so this guy moves his whole family from the states basically carves this dude ranch out of the jungle. You, you gotta realize this guy hasn't done working yet. I mean, he's been working on this for 40 years and he's in his 70s and he's still working every day mm -hmm. doing this. So, I mean, it's, it's impressive. I'm Steve Tucker. I'm the founder and president of Tucker Trail Saddles. We listen to our customers. We leverage the experience and craftsmanship of our team and we embrace the goal to produce the most comfortable and functional trail saddle in the world. And we believe that we are offering with the New Horizon the absolute best and most comfortable trail riding saddle available today. I've ridden thousands of miles all over this country. The saddle I choose is a Tucker saddle. If you are interested in learning more about Best of America by Horseback, visit our website at bestofamericabyhorseback.com. There you can view our show schedule on RFD TV, learn how to join us for upcoming rides and events, benefits of our trail club and how to join, find riding locations and dude ranches by state, shop the online store for Best of America by Horseback logo gear, read our monthly newsletter to stay up to date, and learn about our sponsors and their quality products. It's all here at bestofamericabyhorseback.com. Best of America by Horseback, our viewers and members of the Best of America family have been supporting the Valley of Peace Christian School, 
a small school in the jungles of Belize for several years. Many of our riders love to visit the children when we go there for trail rides. They bring much needed school supplies, musical instruments, and recreational items like soccer balls and shoes. I love seeing the kids. Uh, we're gonna bring pencils, pens, supplies. And so I said, you know what, I'm gonna get two soccer balls. And then at the end there, when I took them out of the bag, the one little kid was, was riding the horse, was sitting over there and he was looking and a big smile on his face. As soon as we were done, I bounced it over to him and he grabbed it and all these kids came around him and he hugged it real tight. Jose had said that their soccer ball that they had had um, broke, deflated or popped. Oh, uh -huh. So they didn't have any other sports stuff. So I was glad that we were able to give them something different. So that was a real joy to see all the smiles on their face. This year, we were exceptionally pleased to learn that one of the students won a regional track competition and with the support of viewers and friends, was given the opportunity to go to nationals where she won first place. She came out to see us and shared her medal. Another student, Edson Landero, learned to play the guitar given to the school last year. He played and sang a song for our group. Another student participated in a national science test where she made a perfect score. The influence of the horse community continues to make a difference in so many lives. What did y'all think about when the kids came to meet us at Banana Bank and their presentation that they had for the group? I enjoyed it a lot. It just back, brought back some memories. The kids were just fantastic. You can tell they really appreciated uh, what Best America by Horseback and Tom C. and the group. It, it was just great. It really touched me. You could see how, um, of course, it was all entertaining, but having children and grandchildren you could really see and you could appreciate the work to do their formal dress oh, yeah. dance and, the, and all of that. They're so it was just up. very, uh, like John said, it was touching. It was really nice. Yes. These children have great pride in their heritage and culture, which they shared with our group in a dance. and they created a dance honoring our cowboy heritage. It seems the kids had to borrow a few cowboy hats for their performance. I noticed when we got to the country of Belize, a little boy came up and stole your hat and ran <laughs> off. Were you alarmed? Uh, well, I was until the little girls came and they assured me that they'd bring it back. They just had these cutest little smiles and a twinkle in their brown eyes. <laughs> Plus they also, hard. they told him that they had already stolen your hat, so <laughs> they, they were uh, safe. <laughs> they wanted a real cowboy's hat to have in their play presentation, oh. and they uh, chose you. We both wanted to see the kids. We were down a couple of years ago, and did health exams on a number of them and uh, kind of wanted to see how they progressed, wanted to have a chance to talk to the principal. Um, and so we got to do that and to hear the kids singing for Tom as they got off the bus uh, was very sort of poignant for me. And uh, it just meant a great deal to spend that time. Children singing, I thought was fantastic for us and the little dance that they've done. Um, got to see a, a monkey there and the, uh, was a jaguar, mm -hmm. beautiful and some of the birds was beautiful mm -hmm. and the estate that we went to was absolutely stunning. This little monkey was about as big as a Coke bottle, just cute in a bug. He's lived at Banana Bank for 40 years, that's his whole life. I got him when he was about six months old. and. Uh, he, he has a, a very human temperament and mind. I think that he's smarter than horses or dogs. They're terribly, terribly intelligent. And by that I mean when he gets tangled up, he doesn't just pull and get angry. He will figure out why he's tangled up, where he's tangled up, and he will untangle himself. He, he can solve problems. <laughs> Okay. <laughs>
Banana Bank Lodge and Horseback Adventure is one of our favorite riding and vacation destinations outside of the U.S. Their accommodations range from simple thatched roof cabanas to air-conditioned suites. They have a beautiful outdoor pool designed by Carolyn Carr and have recently completed a new building which houses an event room, cafe, and Carolyn's own dream art gallery. Mrs. Carr had, um, she's a painter and has a studio there and that was, some of her paintings were remarkable. The gallery houses a collection of original paintings by Carolyn Carr, most of which were inspired by her life in Belize. Daughter Lisa coordinates excursions for guests from cave tubing to Mayan ruin tours, zip lining, and much more. Located right in the middle of Belize, Banana Bank Lodge is the perfect place to stay and be able to see any part of Belize in a short amount of time. If people want to get in touch with you, uh, how do they do it? Um, website is www.bananabank.com. Um, you can also email us at bbl at bananabank.com. Uh, you can contact us by phone. Uh, our phone number is 832-2020. And to dial Belize, you have to dial 011, and then the country code is 501. And then our phone number is 832-2020. No running over the camera person. <laughs>